there's this low inventory, high amount of demand, add on to it, mortgage rates, and then add on top of that. Hey, it's Noel Christopher coming to you with a video here. Been a pretty busy week, really been focusing on a couple of our clients that were buying in multiple markets and having lots of phone calls with lots of different people. And I had an interesting call today with a build to rent developer who is new into the build to rent space, but they've been developing homes for a while. And you know, they were just looking for advice on what I really thought about the market. And I get a lot of questions like this and whether he thought it was a good idea going all in or at least halfway in into the build to rent space. And he asked me what I thought about single family rentals, funds, and the runway for this. And I wish I had recorded my answer at the time because those off the cuff answers are usually the best. But really, if you think about it, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. My last video, I talked about the single family rental space being institutionalized and how that it's, I wouldn't say it's been accelerated because it's happened in all the other asset classes where you hit this tipping point and there could be a lot of different factors. And we're dealing with those factors today where you've got government intervention into the mortgage markets, preventing evictions, giving moratoriums, but then at the same time, leaving the small landlord to hang out to dry. You've got unprecedented demand by a cohort of buyers that weren't around during the last recession. They held back for a lot of reasons. It's record number of buyers and there's a long runway for the household formation in the next 10 years, at least five years for sure, that these people are gonna need homes. You know, there's been a lot of press recently about some data that came out saying that we're about 3.8 million homes under supplied. A year ago, we're really only about a million, 1.2 million homes under supply. Now, how does that happen so quickly? You have a lot of people that aren't selling their homes. You had some economic distress that's happened where people don't have to sell their home because of the forbearance. You have tenants who are not having to move. It's kind of this catch 22. Do you sell your house? But then you don't have a house to move into, so you can't sell your house. So there's this low inventory, high amount of demand, add on to it, mortgage rates, and then add on top of that, you've got unprecedented, unlimited amount of capital of cheap debt that funds have that need to buy homes. You know, the question around, well, is this gonna last for a while? Is the demand for single family rental, build to rent homes going to be there? And yes, because there's a demand for homes. In addition, the wealth gap is widening. I believe, I mean, we're at about 65% home ownership. I don't think we're ever gonna get up to that 70% that we were before the Great Recession, but I think that is also a matter of economics. Those people shouldn't have owned homes or giving away loans. And the underwriting is much more strict. So we have such a strong housing economy, such large demand, that the demand for rentals is going to be there. You have more people that aren't going to be buying homes that can have a professional landlord live in a nice house and not have to have the burden of owning a home, but at the same time, they're not creating wealth by owning a home over the long term. So you have all these things that are gonna lead down the road, I believe, to less home ownership. And on top of that, you've got small landlords. I mean, what's the incentive to own a home, You know, to inherit a home? You probably just wanna sell it because it's not as easy as it used to be. Um, hopefully that can change. That's why companies like ourselves are trying to go out there and make it easier to own a rental home. You know, My last video about the end of the accidental landlord, I think it's happening, but on the other side of that, we're out there trying to make it easier. Other companies like ourselves, like Roofstock, they're trying to make it easier to own a home, to make it more of just, you know, clip a coupon every month. So that's kind of my take on the market. So the demand is there. I mean, we have funds, their yields are going down. I've talked about this recently. We cannot find enough homes to buy. I am shaking as many trees as I can, talking to sell leaseback companies, I buyers, builders, going in and offering incredible opportunities for builders, consulting with new builders that want to get into the space and creating long-term relationships with funds that they can continue to buy over the next three, four, five years. I mean, that runway, I can see that far ahead. I believe it's further, but you know, the question is, you can't really look back, and this is something that Robert Schiller talks about in Narrative Economics, and looking back, how far ahead can you look as far as predicting where markets are gonna go. I think the housing market, we can look in 2021, but with all the unprecedented things that's happened in the last year, with a pandemic, with lockdowns, 
with these restrictions and in my opinion more government intervention we've set a precedence here that could create some uncertainty but regardless of what happens in the housing market it's not going to change the fact that people still need a place to live and we saw this in the last recession yeah a lot of people went in the foreclosure but then they turned around and rented the home down the street it was the ideal situation for them right they could stay in their neighborhood so that's ever going to go away i'm not really concerned with where house prices are going to go wages are important and the people ability to pay rent i think there's a huge issue with lower income you know even low wage workers that are integral to our economy that you know we need to have people that work in restaurants we need to have a subset of our economy that is lower wage we need to have jobs for them and on top of that we need a place for them to live and we're not figuring that out so that's something else we're going to have to figure out here um, with some of these jobs that aren't coming back so long video tell me what you think a lot of things in my mind a lot of things happening in the market right now and i just kind of wanted to uh, you know somebody asked this question today and this is basically what i said so leave me a comment let me know what you think thanks